a day is coming when all this fasting will change and they will become a festival. Now, this is wonderful for us who are called into the calling of Mispa, which is the call of engaging the presence of God in prayer and fasting day and night. This is wonderful for us because we don't fast because of problems. Yes, I know many people who fast because every other thing has refused to work. It's now one thing remaining, running to God. And I know God is gracious. And he always releases what you want. You know, people believe that prayers through fasting, they like have another gear. Yes, I believe in it. They generate another supernatural power. Other people believe that uh, the prayer of fasting, they are powerful because I demonstrate to God, I demonstrate to God what I need. But I want to let you know that the prayer of fasting in the house of prayer in, within the new covenant, it is not a place of only mourning, lamenting, and crying before God, but it's a place of festival. When we come, our hearts are full of a new song. When we come, our hearts are full of joy. When we come to the Lord, our hearts are expectant. When we come to the Lord, we come being assured by the word of God. And all this releases a joy, a continuous joy. That's what the Bible is calling a festival. It releases a, a time of continuous joy. And all our life will be full of a festival of joy. As the Bible says, God will turn all those fasting that sometimes we do because of great problem. Sometimes we come before the Lord lamenting, crying, but we shall come before the Lord with expectancy, with a surety. As the Bible says, this is the confidence that we have, that whatever we ask of the Father, now that confidence gives you joy. So, I want to challenge all of us that we need to come to the new covenant prayer and fasting level where our approach to God is not because of the bad things that has happened to us, but our approach and our focus is to focus into the result. What has God promised? And rather than coming to cry before the Lord, we come to rejoice thanking him for his promises. For example, you may have a chronic disease that even the doctors have said you can never get healed. Like how God sent Isaiah to the, to the king. And he said, prepare yourself for surely you are going to die. Some of us has come to that end. But I want to give you good news. Hallelujah. That even if you have been told prophetically that you shall die, you need to come before God rejoicing because of the promises of God. And one of the promises of God is that you shall not die, but you shall live to proclaim the name of the Lord. What I'm trying to say, measure on the promises of God on that particular problem. It could be your finances. There is a promise of God on finances that it is he who gives us power to make wealth. Then there's another promise that says God is always pleased with the prosperity of his people. God is always pleased with the prosperity of his people. God is not pleased with your poverty. God is not pl pleased with your failure. God is not happy. The Bible says when the children of Israel were going through the desert, there was no demon. And the Bible says specifically that when 
they went down and they were crying. Even God himself, he felt bad about it. He was grieved. Even him, he was grieved. When they went into this problem, even himself, he was grieved by this, those circumstances. And so, we need to come to God rejoicing because of the promises of God. And that's why the house of prayer or the altar of prayer of the new covenant is full of joy. Hallelujah. The house of prayer of Moses was full of fear because it was guided by the law. It was guided by the ability of the people to accomplish. It was guided by the ability of the people to do right. But in the new covenant, after we have been washed by the blood of Jesus, our covenant, or rather our joy, or rather the result of our prayer is not guided by the how we look, how we present ourselves. It is based on the covenant of God through Jesus Christ and every promise that God has promised us through his son Jesus. The ceiling point of the covenant is the death of Jesus. And the joy of that covenant is the resurrection of Jesus to affirm every promise Jesus had promised to bring to reality every promise that Jesus promised, he had to rise again from death and walk with us and declare, whatever I promise, my father will do it. And that is where we, we, we drive our joy. We drive our joy from his promises. We drive our joy from that covenant of promise that Jesus gave out. It, we drive our joy from the confirmation of every of God's covenant through the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. Nothing else matters. Not your effort. Not the much you give your money. There is nothing you can do beyond the life of Jesus. So I want to encourage all of us who are here and those who are listening that your prayer is guaranteed. The answer to your prayer is guaranteed through the resurrection of Jesus. I know it's a bit difficult for me, but I pray for you in Jesus' name. Just place your, your, your hand into your heart and say after me, Heavenly Father, help me to accept and to understand about this revelation in Jesus' name. Amen.